All right, let's rank the uh, let's rank the NFL remaining quarterbacks. Eight of them. Eight quarterbacks left. All eight of them, by the way. Eli Manning said today were counselors at the Manning Passing Academy. Really? Mm-hmm. Good for look at the man. The Manning coaching tree is uh, is strong. Manning's, by the way, fascinatingly as well. A lot of people, I think, like and watch the Manning cast, but they only do like eleven games or something in the season. So obviously, the next question is, well, let's make it all the games. What's what's this eleven stuff? And they're like, no, nah. no, I wouldn't. I would only work the eleven days a year. Yeah, but they're like, no. And they kind of obviously they dressed it up like well, you you want to leave them wanting more. You don't want to yeah. you don't want to try and push it too far. There's definitely something to that. It's first off tough to do. It's I mean, tough to be that entertaining. <laughs> Like it, the, you kind of you run out of material. There man. might be something to it, but I think a lot bigger part of it is Peyton and Eli going. I don't want to do this for seventeen weeks when I can do it for eleven. Yeah, because they're probably getting paid really well to do eleven and not that much more to do. Yeah, I mean those more. guys have control over everything they're doing. They can do yeah. whatever the hell they like. Like we should just. What if we just want to do one podcast a week? We were going the other way. We're like, man, we got to do. Let's mm. do five. We should be saying we're going to do one a week, thirty I minutes. I don't think we have people the same. want more. I don't think we have the same kind of leverage that the Mannings do. We don't have the uh, Manning cachet. All right, let's rank the remaining quarterbacks. You want to give uh, your list first, and I'll give mine, and then we can uh, fight it out. Okay. Uh, starting off with Patrick Mahomes, MVP, Stevenson Award winner this year, uh, best quarterback in the NFL. Joe Burrow, number two. Uh, Josh Allen, number three. Jalen Hurts, number four. Trevor Lawrence, number five. Dak Prescott, number six. Wow. Danny Dimes, number seven. And Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, number eight. I think your list almost directly correlates with PFF grades this year. It's close. Maybe with more. Uh, no, there's a couple. I think they're different. It's pretty close. I think Burrow finished number one, didn't he? Yeah, but it was like flipping a coin between Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen with their grading. And then if you look at war, it's Mahomes. So, yeah, I mean, this all, I, I have Mahomes one as well. I mean, I think the, the real debate spots, right, is like the top three, Burrow and Allen at two and three. I don't know. I, I think most people would take Mahomes first, but we said last year at this time, like Mahomes wasn't as good as Allen last year or Burrow. Mine, by the way, is specifically like now. Just not, right now. Not generally or going forward or whatever. It's like it's just the games the are happening this weekend. These are the quarterbacks I think are in best order. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, so I'm... Because, for example, I think Josh Allen might be a better player than Joe Burrow, but right now the guy has, like, is a little bit scattershot, you know? And I'm not – I'm losing a little bit of faith in that. He is. Um, so I'll give you my list. I, I also went with Mahomes number one. I think you trust him the most right now, the way he's playing, the way he's facilitating that offense. I did go Josh Allen number two, but I think I, I – you know me, Sam. I'm like a – I'm the upside guy, right? Even mm -hmm. though Josh Allen might make more mistakes – than Mahomes and, and Burrow on a weekly basis. Seven big time throws last week. Like he's gonna go win playoff games for you. Okay. All these guys can win playoff games, but Allen really can, especially with the rushing ability and everything he brings to the table. Okay. So I went Allen at two and Burrow at three. That's fine. You said you're the upside guy, but that then you then you then put Dak next. Then I put Dak over Trevor Lawrence. And yes. Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts, yeah. Yeah. So then I started leaning more on longer term performance <laughs> so you're the upside yeah. guy through three players I, I may have i may have overreacted to jalen hurts coming back off injury in week 18. yeah no i think so dak's track record of multiple years of playing well i'm going with that over jalen hurts having one good year and the greatest quarterback prospect to come along in a generation yeah but i've also seen trevor lawrence the last two weeks he hasn't been great he hasn't been great overall huh. it's not like josh allen like Josh Allen's played better than Trevor Lawrence with all the high upside plays, despite some of the mistakes Allen has made. So yeah, Dak, four. Trevor Lawrence, five. Jalen Hurts, six. The great Daniel Jones, seven. The great Daniel Jones. And Brock Dimes. Purdy, eight. So to me, there's a little bit of I wonder track record here where I went with Dak at four. And then figured out Lawrence and Hurts at five and six. Maybe Hurts should be five and Lawrence should be six. I wonder the me. people that the, the full Brock Purdy stands, you know, the guys that are comparing him to Tom Brady and Joe Montana and all this kind of stuff, like how high would they put him up that list? Just Purdy or did you say Daniel Jones? Too? No, Purdy. Like even the truly, the truly demented Brock Purdy stands, the guys that are like pushing the full 
craziness of this? Like, how high would even they rank the rank him? I don't know. I don't know who you put him above. Would you, like, would they put him above Trevor Lawrence? Because that's like, the thing. The stats like, are way. Better. I can see. Would you put him above Dak because he doesn't have 15 interceptions. The obvious one would be you jump Daniel Jones, right? But how much? How many of those other guys could you even plausibly put him ahead of? Yeah, not many. I don't know, man. I mean, I think some of the Daniel Jones hype I'm seeing is out of this world as well. Yeah. And I'm, all we try to do is bring perspective. As I said earlier in the show, the the overreaction to Wild Card Weekend historically is, is it's just legendary, right? <laughs> the funny thing is, right, because, again, people like always treat PFF like a monolith. There's one opinion from PFF, and that's it. Everyone gets tired. Look at you and me. We just had different opinions. I know. Um, so people were I, – I had some people on Twitter – complaining that ah you just never come off your daniel jones take it's like i've had about three different daniel jones takes in the last four years like didn't like him as a prospect was actually reasonably pleasantly surprised by him year one you liked him after year two right was talking him up after year two and then he kind of stank and so i've been all over the place in daniel jones and then this year i'm kind of pushing back saying you know he hasn't actually been as good as a lot of the the hype surrounding him so the last thing i think i can be accused of is sticking to one rigid daniel jones take since I first saw him play. I will say, if, if I have a weakness, I don't even know if this is a weakness. I think I think other people might view this too. I think it's easy to underrate the rushing ass, the rushing contribution of quarterbacks. If I have a weakness. Just one. If hmm. I only have one. And even that one, you're walking back mid-sentence. I don't make mistakes. Yeah. If I have a weakness, which obviously I don't. Carry on. Which I don't. Hmm. But if I did have one, yeah. maybe, just maybe I underrate rushing performance but that, here's why i walked it back because i'm like how many times on the show am i like ah you know i like this rushing quarterback who raises the floor of the offense but when you go and you're like ranking the quarterbacks and what they're bringing to the table maybe i'm underrating jalen hurts and daniel jones because of how much their offense relies on their legs and it's really really valuable right when the when the quarterback runs not only is it probably a good idea because you're doing you're doing you're usually running when the offense gives it to you if you're a running quarterback right you're usually running when the scramble is open or when you read the defense and have the numbers advantage as a runner that's part of the reason why qb rushing is valuable from an epa standpoint because you're choosing the right place essentially to run and then when you do that 8 10 12 times a game you are adding hidden value so maybe we're underrating daniel jones and jalen hurts and their contributions to their particular offenses with their legs which by the way Dak did a great job of the other night he's always been capable and he showed that the other night, had a rushing touchdown, a couple key scrambles. Mm-hmm. You're right. You have no flaws. There we go. We talked myself down mm. from having any flaws. But um, the thing I was trying to say is, like, Daniel Jones played well against the Vikings. And as I, I tweeted out a couple weeks ago, like four or five quarterbacks have had their very best game of their season against the Vikings. Oh, yeah. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but you play 16 games. And if your very best game is against – the Viking, like five, four or five quarterbacks doing that, that's a huge number. Well, not just that, but if you look at PFF grades, his three best games, two of them are against the Vikings. One of them is against the Bears, whose defense stinks. One of them is against the Colts late in the season, whose defense stinks. Like, all of his best games came against very, very bad defenses, with the one exception of the Week 14 Philadelphia game. Yeah, and so, again, perspective, too. It's good to play well. Like you're, you, sh- it's good to play good football against bad teams or whatever. That's he, valuable stuff. Yes. But you, th- then you have to pump the brakes when you're like, Daniel Jones is the greatest. He's basically Patrick Mahomes. Also, like at some point, I mean, this is the exact antithesis of what PFF does, right? Like you look for context, you look at efficiency, you look at how a guy is playing in his environment. But at some point, the actual volume of what you're doing as a quarterback is kind of relevant. Yeah. And Daniel Jones has less touchdowns in the last three years than two or three quarterbacks had this season. Like, at some point, the fact that he's averaging, like, 12 touchdowns a year is kind of a problem. I mean, the people that are saying, like, oh, he's I, – I've, see, I've seen the comparisons. I know it's Giants fans. But I've seen comparisons to both Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen this week. He has 15 and, big-time throws in the last two seasons combined. Josh Allen had seven at the weekend. Yeah, I was going to use something similar. Just 20-plus yard throws. Jones has – 10 for the year right Allen had five on Sunday and again look he doesn't have Stefan Diggs there is context to that but at some point the context only it only bridges so much of that chasm you know what I mean you don't get all the way there just because of that sorry I interrupted where I'm most intrigued with Daniel Jones is the fact that the supporting cast on paper 
does look terrible. Yes. And he has still performed well, led his team as far as he has. And four years into Daniel Jones' career, we don't have a season where you could say offensive line was good enough, pass protection-wise, and receivers were even above average. We haven't even gotten to that point. Never mind elite, right? That's the thing that might fascinate me the most about Daniel Jones. Because even like a Jalen Hurts, you could say, okay, he took this big step forward, but now he's got he's got Devontae Smith, he's got A.J. Brown, he's got Dallas Goddard, and the best offensive line in the league. Like Daniel Jones hasn't even had one of those things in four years with the Giants. And I think that's most intriguing about Daniel Jones going forward. I think what's scary is the fact that they just want a playoff game and everybody's like, well, that's it. Daniel Jones earned himself a contract, right? Again, there's got to be something in between those two extremes. Yeah. Daniel Jones impressive and quick give him 40 million because they want a game. Right. I mean, I I don't think there's any way in the world they should be trying to extend him to a monster new contract, I think. Now look, they didn't they didn't pick up his fifth year option, right? So they're kind of they're in less of a good position than they would have been had they done that. But this is franchise tag territory. This is not like what's the maximum amount of money we can hand Daniel Jones right now. All right, we need um Hashtag let us know. Everyone in the chat, rank your quarterbacks. Rank your eight quarterbacks. Let us know.